In 2026, amidst the Great Depression, the government and the public become desperate for money, leading to the launch of the California Grand Lottery. The twist? If someone kills the lottery winner before sundown, they can legally claim the jackpot, with the only rule being no bullets allowed. By 2030 in Los Angeles, Sean wins the lottery and immediately becomes the target of a large crowd trying to kill him. Sean fights off the attackers and escapes by jumping a fence and breaks into a home where he finds an elderly woman. He destroys her phone, but a drone records everything. The woman pulls out a grand lottery bolt gun and kills him, summoning the lottery team who confirms his death and awards her a $22 million check, which is broadcast on TV. A month later, Katie arrives in LA to revive her acting career. On the bus, she fondly looks at an Oscar keychain while amusing a little girl, but when the girl's father mocks her over the phone, Katie pretends to be a cop and threatens him. He straightens up, and an older woman thanks Katie before stealing her watch. As Katie notices an ad for Lewis Protection Agency, she observes how tense and violent people in the streets have become. The media buzzes about the upcoming lottery drawing with a record jackpot of $3.6 billion. At home, Noel prepares his weapons while singing the Ninja Turtles theme. Katie arrives at her internet-rented room, only to discover it's in terrible condition, and her roommate Shadi is quite irritating. Shadi makes tasteless jokes, ignores her supportive mother's calls, and her obnoxious boyfriend DJ pranks Katie by slapping her when he hands her the house keys. The next morning, Noel's ad for bodyguard services for lottery winners airs on TV. Katie wakes up to find the bathroom leaking into her room, ruining her clothes. Needing to get to an audition, she's forced to rent clothes from Shadi and take a cab, where the driver bombards her with inappropriate comments and celebrity gossip, mentioning that rapper Machine Gun Kelly has his own bunker. At her audition, Katie shares how she had to pause her childhood acting career to care for her sick mother. While reaching for her monologue notes, she accidentally activates Shadi's lottery ticket with her thumbprint, officially entering the game. Her face appears on all the other actresses' tickets, announcing her as the new winner. The actress's supportive demeanor turns hostile, and they attack her. Katie uses her stage fighting skills to dodge them, but the chaos escalates when even the staff join in. Katie escapes to another floor and hides in a room, only to find herself in a self-defense class where the participants also try to kill her. They call her my jackpot and attack, ignoring her attempts to understand what's happening. As they fight each other, Katie is grabbed and thrown through a wall, landing in a yoga class where more people try to kill her. Blood is spilled as the chaos intensifies. Suddenly, Noel bursts through the ceiling, saving Katie and offering her five free saves before his services will cost 10% of the prize. He fights off the attackers, even using Katie as a weapon, and ties her to his back for protection. Once the opponents are down, Katie grabs Noel's paralysis dart gun, but he easily takes it back. He then positions the unconscious bodies to prevent them from choking on their tongues and explains that the lottery drone outside will post her location every 14 minutes, so they must keep moving. As they flee, Noel points out that other players can't kill each other. A food truck worker throws a knife at Katie, but Noel helps her dodge it. They escape in his car, but alerts about Katie's location prompt more people to join the chase. An ice cream truck abandons children, and even the lady from the bus now has a grand lottery bolt gun. Noel explains the lottery rules to Katie, surprised she didn't know. She tells him she and her mom only watched movies and baking shows, avoiding the depressing news. Soon, they're chased by people on bikes and ATVs. A mallet of cocktail hits the car, setting it on fire, but Noel keeps driving until the wind puts out the flames. He crashes into a biker while trying to evade others who set a new fire. Katie, overwhelmed, wishes to quit the game, but Noel informs her the only way out is to leave the city. Noel shoots an attacker with a dart, then drives in circles as enemies hurl objects at them, creating a cloud of dust. This allows them to silently push the car out and escape unnoticed until another Molotov hits the ground. Katie continues insisting she wants to quit, and Noel agrees to take her to the nearest exit point. Just then, the bikers spot them, and the chase resumes. One enemy jumps through the back window, and Katie grabs her knife while Noel pulls out more darts. The woman bites Noel's arm, but he hits her with the car mirror and tells Katie to drive despite her protests that she can't. He moves to the back seat, puts a helmet on their opponent, and kicks her out of the car. As another Molotov is thrown, Noel forces Katie to drive through a wall to escape. They cause a biker to crash into a stopped car, and Katie knocks another biker out with her helmet. As they attempt to leave, the car breaks down from all the damage. Katie tries to run, but Noel stops her, explaining that he earns nothing if she quits, though he still wants to help her, believing in treating others the way you want to be treated. Katie throws sand in his face and punches him, forcing Noel to reset his nose. Just then, the police car appears, and Katie seeks help from the officers, only to find out they want to kill her too. Noel catches their taser and fights them off while Katie escapes. 
She hides her face with a map on the street, but the crowd notices the lottery drone nearby and starts searching for her. She slips into a wax museum and is relieved when the guard who opposes the lottery allows her to hide among the statues. Katie calls Shadi, asking to borrow her car, but Shadi keeps probing about her location, making Katie realize Shadi is also playing the lottery. At that moment, a statue announces Katie's presence, revealing her location. Shadi and DJ try to enter the museum but are stopped by the guard, who reminds them they were banned for an inappropriate incident with a statue. Shadi punches the guard out, and they rush inside. Katie hears them approaching and hides, but when she tries to sneak away, they spot her. DJ pushes her onto a desk, and Katie throws a bottle at Shadi's head, then throws sand in DJ's face to get him off. The couple teams up against her, but Katie defends herself with the statue's staff. When she tries to escape, Shadi kicks her, causing her to lose the staff. In the next room, Shadi and DJ beat her with the broken staff halves, and Katie retaliates by throwing statues at them, mistaking the Kardashians for Cher. The fight shifts to the horror room, where Katie, Shadi, and DJ grab any prop they can find to continue their brawl. Movie costumes and fake weapons come into play as they struggle, with Katie finally making a run for it. Shadi hurls an axe at her, but it's just a prop, so it doesn't harm her. Katie presses a button to bring down the museum's shutter and almost leaves, but she remembers what Noel taught her. She adjusts the guard's body to prevent him from choking, then rolls out just as the shutter closes, trapping Shadi and DJ inside. Immediately, a tour bus guide spots Katie and announces her location over the microphone. As attackers begin closing in, Noel arrives in a police car, rescuing her. Katie remains suspicious, thinking Noel might kill her to avoid losing payment for her quitting. While the tour bus repeatedly crashes into the back of the police car, Noel remarks how useful a bunker would be. Katie recalls the taxi driver and soon guides them to Machine Gun Kelly's house. Kelly misunderstands Katie's request for help, assuming she's there for something inappropriate. But before things escalate, the tour bus arrives. Katie grabs Noel's dark gun and forces Kelly to open his panic room. The two rush inside, shooting Kelly with a dart to put him to sleep as they struggle to shut the door. A crowd gathers and someone tries to wedge their arm in the door. Noel prepares to shoot, but Katie, misunderstanding, grabs the gun and shoots the intruder's arm instead, forcing it to retreat so they can finally secure the door. Inside the panic room, they monitor the crowd via security cameras. Katie remains wary of Noel, keeping the gun trained on him, so he sits beside her and shares some sweet, personal stories to prove his good intentions. When Katie's keychain falls out of her pocket, Noel compliments it, prompting Katie to open up. She reveals she became an actress for her mom, who adored movies and celebrities. Her mother gave her the keychain as a reminder that she would be proud of Katie no matter what, especially since Katie had once been a successful child actor. However, her father ran away with all her earnings. Noel listens sympathetically, and Katie finally hands the gun back to him. Curious, Katie asks why Noel would help her quit, and he explains his two main priorities, saving people's lives and making enough money to continue doing so. Outside, the crowd keeps banging on the door. Shadi slaps Kelly to wake him, but when that doesn't work, they drag him to the pool and force him to give up the door's password, which is the meme 6969. Watching this unfold on the cameras, Noel grows frustrated, knowing he has no choice but to make a call for a favor. He orders a phone strike and rushes to secure Katie's phone as safe. As Shadi punches in the password, Noel and Katie brace against the door. But instead of the door opening, the crowd is interrupted by an amber alert, causing all their phones to ring. It's a trap. Suddenly, the phones start exploding, severely burning various body parts. Amid the chaos, Noel and Katie escape, though Noel pauses to put out the flames on someone's groan. Outside, a squad of guards with damage-proof cars and rubber bullet guns waits. They demand Katie, but she insists they take Noel as well. During the ride, Katie asks if Noel is working with the guards. He explains that he used to, but now he's freelance. They arrive at High Tech Headquarters, and Katie meets Lewis, the head of the security company. Katie is unimpressed with Lewis, especially as he mocks Noel. She demands to be taken out of the city, but Lewis brushes her off, gifting her a new phone and assuring her that she's in the safest building in the country. He also shows off the grenades casually tucked into his pocket, clearly enjoying the power dynamic. With just four hours left in the game, Lewis takes them on a tour, showing off a wall of anonymous winners they've helped, noting that they've had a shortage of clients recently. He explains that their fee is 30%, and Katie agrees to the contract, ensuring Noel gets a share. They soon spot on the security cameras that a crowd is assembling outside, so Lewis decides to move Katie to a hidden underground bunker using decoy vehicles. First, they receive medical treatment for their injuries and Noel shares his background. He used to be a mercenary with Lewis, traveling the globe to eliminate targets. Upon realizing that some of his victims were not as bad as he thought, he left a mission, 
causing it to fail and resulting in only him and Lewis surviving. He now donates his earnings to the families of his victims and teammates. Katie, in turn, reveals that her father was her manager and took all her earnings when she turned 18. After her mother's death, Katie was left with $600 and a bus ticket to La. An employee then brings a prosthetics machine, which Katie uses to disguise herself as an old man. Noel becomes suspicious of the facility's high maintenance costs and the lack of clients. After Katie completes her disguise, Noel realizes Lewis is pretending to protect them while actually planning to kill them. Lewis leads them to a car, but Katie insists Noel come with them, which Lewis refuses. Desperate, Katie kicks Lewis and Noel uses the opportunity to open the garage door. He shoots the guards with darts as the crowd rushes in, and they ignore Katie, allowing Noel to pull her out and give her a keycard to escape. As Noel holds off more guards, Lewis tortures him for information. Meanwhile, Katie hides in one of the A-driven decoy cars as they leave. The car's change of route alerts Lewis' system as social media buzzes with news of her disappearance, making her a hero among fans. Katie is about to leave town but gets a call from Noel, who threatens to kill himself if she doesn't return. Reluctantly, she turns back. Lewis takes Noel to an old theater and reveals his true nature. He always knew they were killing civilians and didn't care because it was easy money. He admits to killing their team and framing Noel. With only 15 minutes remaining, Katie grabs a bolt gun from the car and heads to the theater. She threatens to self-destruct, but Lewis doesn't believe her, so she shows him her live social media feed to ensure he can't deny his actions. As she nearly pulls the trigger, Lewis drops the handcuff keys and asks for a deal. Katie pretends to comply, but instead kicks him off the stage, revealing she was acting. With Lewis out of the way, other players come after Katie. She uses whatever she can find to slow them down. Lewis grabs her leg, causing her to fall, but a cop tries to help and is kicked away by Lewis. Amidst the chaos, Noel fights the crowd while still handcuffed, singing the Ninja Turtles theme. The chair breaks, giving him more freedom. Katie disarms Lewis and throws the keys to Noel, who finally frees himself. Shadi arrives with a katana, but Katie quickly disarms her and knocks her out. As the clock winds down, the theater fills with people. Noel and Lewis continue their fight, and Katie climbs the stage decorations for safety. Lewis grabs an axe, but Noel uses symbols to fend him off. Katie kicks the bus lady away as she tries to climb after her. Noel destroys the stage setup to prevent pursuit. Lewis' men form a human stairway for him to climb, and he reaches Katie. They fight until Katie slips, but manages to activate one of his grenades with her keychain. The grenade explodes, killing Lewis. Katie falls, but her fans catch her with a large flag just in time. As the countdown ends, Katie embraces Noel and promises him 50% of the winnings. The lottery representatives arrive with her check, and Katie announces she's quitting acting. Six months later, Katie and Noel are working on various charitable projects, including the Free Protection Agency, a self-defense and stage-fighting school, and a center for kids with troubled backgrounds. Noel's attempt to open a Ninja Turtles-themed pizzeria results in a copyright lawsuit, and the duo enjoys a vacation on their own superyacht.